Death, therefore, the most awful of evils, is nothing to us, seeing that, when we are, death is not coming, and, when death is coming, we are not. Death does not concern us, because as long as we exist, death is not here. And when it does come, we no longer exist. It is possible to provide security against other ills, but as far as death is concerned, we men live in a city without walls. The art of living well and the art of dying well are one. Some men spend their whole life furnishing for themselves the things proper to life without realizing that at our birth each of us was poured a mortal brew to drink. It is not so much our friend's help that helps us, as the confidence of their help. You don't develop courage by being happy in your relationships every day. You develop it by surviving difficult times and challenging adversity. The noble man is chiefly concerned with wisdom and friendship, of these, the former is a mortal good, the latter an immortal one. To eat and drink without a friend is to devour like the lion and the wolf. We should look for someone to eat and drink with before looking for something to eat and drink. Of all the things which wisdom provides to make us entirely happy, much the greatest is the possession of friendship. Nothing is enough for the man to whom enough is too little. He who is not satisfied with a little is satisfied with nothing. The misfortune of the wise is better than the prosperity of the fool. We must exercise ourselves in the things which bring happiness, since, if that be present, we have everything, and, if that be absent, all our actions are directed toward attaining it. I was not, I was, I am not, I care not. He who is peace of mind disturbs neither himself nor another. Let no one be slow to seek wisdom when he is young nor weary in the search of it when he is grown old. For no age is too early or too late for the health of the soul. Misfortune seldom intrudes upon the wise man, his greatest and highest interests are directed by reason throughout the course of life. Empty is the argument of the philosopher which does not relieve any human suffering. The fool's life is empty of gratitude and full of fears, its course lies wholly toward the future. He who says either that the time for philosophy has not yet come or that it has passed is like someone who says that the time for happiness has not yet come or that it has passed. The greater the difficulty, the more the glory in surmounting it. Live in obscurity. If a person fights the clear evidence of his senses, he will never be able to share in genuine tranquility. He who least needs tomorrow will most gladly greet tomorrow. It is not the pretended but the real pursuit of philosophy that is needed, for we do not need the appearance of good health but to enjoy it in truth. If God listened to the prayers of men, all men would quickly have perished, for they are forever praying for evil against one another. It is folly for a man to pray to the gods for that which he has the power to obtain by himself. I never desired to please the rabble. What pleased them, I did not learn, and what I knew was far removed from their understanding.